it's interesting because when I was um um when we were speaking before I saw lots of oranges and and yellows in your um, auric field and now they're showing me lots of blue which usually tells me this is where to go first a lot of blue so this is taking me to the Andromeda galaxy now the Andromeda galaxy is outside of the Milky Way galaxy it's actually not a part of this galaxy and to to get to and from there you use the Ant Antares stargate so therefore your roots are outside of this galaxy they're from the Andromeda galaxy it's a lot of blue there it's very um it's a very watery planet uh it's connection to the elements I actually think that Natalie had um, um a connection here as well so you've had connections together in Andromeda, the Andromeda galaxy. So this is fairly connected now. So with um, uh, Natalie, she was um, uh, was a lot of uh, doing a lot of elemental work. She did a lot of work with dolphins, whales, mermaids, um, uh, in Andromeda Galaxy, um, you were connected with her through that. You did scientific work. Your uh, you were studying the elementals, and she could connect. She could um, she could communicate with the elementals. So your work was scientific. Your scientific work was to understand the purpose of the elementals and how they um uh, what their importance was you were part of a team you led a team of people this was pretty important work because there were elementals on a lot of different planets but nobody understood them very well uh, so this was pretty important work anything to do with the elements so uh, a lot of them are water the ones that you studied so these were dolphins whales uh, mermaids um, sea yeah. creatures I'm even getting like these huge seahorses these are the um, the elementals there are other elementals too of the air but these were particularly of the water uh, so you um, more mermaid like so she could go in and out of the water um you would go uh, would submerge in a in a craft okay so um so in these this lifetime that we're talking about here is one of the elementals that you were studying but she spent a lot of time on land but she actually had um gills at the side of her neck there but she could walk it's not like um the little mermaid or anything like that where they all have tails it's like they they could walk they were uh, were land creatures as well as sea creatures it's not quite like the cartoons uh, so you had a um, connection there you did um, you had a connection and you had a relationship but you didn't necessarily get married um, that wasn't a part of the um, wasn't a part of the life on Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, you created connections there. So the connections, so this will be important to what's happening now. So the connections that you created with Natalie were the same or were similar to the ones you created with your team, people in your team. Um, you would um, speak to others on uh, in groups, so on a stage. Not, not a really big mm -hmm. stage. I'm getting a low stage, which says to me that these are people that are more your peers rather than talking to you. If it was a high stage, it would show me that these are people who have no idea what you're talking about, uh, that you're trying to convert. Whereas it's a lower stage, so it's sort of saying to me that these are people that are your peers. Uh, and, uh, and so you're um, handing them or communicating to them this information to do with these elementals now 
why I mentioned the Antares Stargate is you travel as well. You would travel um, across galaxies to also share this information with other planets. Some were water planets, but not all of them were water planets. Some um, you shared them with the water planets so that they would know more about their elementals, but you also shared them with um, other planets like Orion and Sirius, who you do have lifetimes on as well. But you shared them with those uh, planets so that they would have an understanding of the elementals on other planets, not necessarily on their own. Um, so that like us having an understanding of what's on the moon or Mars, but not necessarily um, living it. Uh, so yours was an education uh, experience then. You moved from that scientific realm to educational. This is all in one lifetime, but th these lifetimes go for, depending on your um, purpose. So your purpose was big, and so your lifetime was... The average lifetime, say in our lifetime, um, in our years would be around three or four hundred. Yours was around five or six hundred years. So you had a lot to do in that life and you got to a lot of planets. So you then enlightened them as to what elementals were and how they could be communicated with uh, and what they could do for other, other, um, other planets and the species itself. So that's one aspect. I'm getting that's one aspect is that you spoke to groups of people who had an understanding of elementals in the first place. So you weren't talking to people who had no idea what was going on. So that can relate directly to uh, the businesses that you're setting up in that you're, um, and which you are anyway, but you'll be speaking to people who have an understanding of what you're communicating with it's not going to be a broad uh, connection or communication with people okay so it's going to be more specific and directed okay so hang in there it'll all come together <laughs> that's one lifetime um, that they're showing me okay you spent quite a few lifetimes in andromeda galaxy and the constellation that's a little bit different as well However, what they're saying is they don't, um, you were gathering information um, and ex expanded who you are. That's part of your consciousness question is these lifetimes uh, that we're not going to go into at the moment, but there were many, many of them and they helped you to expand your consciousness as you came to understand that's why they were showing me about how you helped people to understand the elementals who didn't even have elementals on their planet. That was expanding their consciousness, had that experience in Andromeda Galaxy and Andromeda Constellation. Uh, they were a little different. One was a, a lot broader in space. Uh, and so you would incarnate on different planets within that galaxy so that you could experience, have that experience. Um, it was all ca always connecting with people and nature. Uh, nature was always involved in there. Uh, and you, you would, um, and that was expanding your consciousness. So they're showing me that every lifetime that you had, and there were hundreds of them within this Andromeda galaxy and constellation, uh, that was expanding your consciousness. You wanted to understand the stars. And so therefore, when you came through the Antares Stargate, it was like, wow, you know, I've got a whole another galaxy to explore here. Uh, so you didn't sort of say, oh, each of these is going to expand my consciousness. It was a thirst for knowledge and information. And that thirst or quest for knowledge and information helped you to expand your experiences and therefore your consciousness. And how that works is that this very small part of you that incarnates is then affecting the whole of the soul. So if, if your, your soul is vast, but if we have an, uh, have an analogy, it's like your soul is the size of your body and your incarnation is the skin on the tip of your finger. That's this incarnation. 
So you have many, many experiences that expand the soul. Uh, so when you incarnate at any time, this is a leading edge experience. You're excited to go forth. This is a leading edge experience and you choose this so that you can help the soul on a whole to expand. The people you incarnate with are people you've incarnated with before and you help each other. So where, where are we going next? We're going to Orion next. Okay, this was an incarnation you had, an Orion, that um, there was a lot of conflict. Um, I can see you frowning. There's a lot of conflict. You're trying to work it out. You want people to connect and live harmoniously, but there is too much density and there is too much uh, mind control and you don't uh, and you're you get angry um, angry because you can't seem to help others to get out of this quagmire of density and thought it's a little bit like what we have um, on earth at the moment this density but this is um, a lot worse so we have different polarities you have a positive and a negative polarity we would call this a negative polarity on Orion at this time it was there were a lot of soldiers so you were on the fringe um, you didn't want to be a soldier but mainly uh, that's all they needed men for on Orion was to become soldiers and to fight uh, the queens of Orion um, they ruled where you were it wasn't um, right under the it was under the queen's control but it was a far-reaching control not directly where they held their quarters so women were held in high esteem um, in that time but there weren't a lot of um, women around so the men would fight inwardly with each other they would uh, try and control one another it was a, a hierarchy within the men that was was empty because they had no power and no control but it was very um, very masculine masculine to the nth degree um, and we saw a lot of that come to come to earth as well um, but we'll stay here. So um, I'm sort of uh, feeling into where you are within this model. So you're in here and you're um, experiencing the inner frustration of not being able to... Why do you think that there's something different? I mean, nobody else on this planet does. So why do you think there's a different way of doing things? It's like I can see a seed within your heart. It's like there's a space there. There's, there's uh, something that you've brought with you that is, um, is a seed that's sort of trying to come forth. And that's something that all of these other people have. But theirs are like what I'm being shown is like, uh, they're like overgrown ivy. Theirs has been overgrown whereas yours is still clear and vibrant. And it's clear and vibrant because you keep tapping into it. So you, you aren't allowed to do meditation in those places uh, because they want total control. They don't want you to be in control of your own life. So, you, uh, so instead, you spend time in um, nature. You actually steal some time in nature, saying that you're going hunting or that you're going to um, look for something that's needed at that time. But really what you're doing is you're immersing yourself in nature and that part, that seed within you begins to expand. So it's the light in the darkness, um, not physical darkness, as in um, it's not dark around you, but it is very, very... Um, feels desert like even though there are, are trees and um, a little bit of water around it still feels desert like it feels desert like because um, there has been um, because of the vibration of the people around in fact if you were to look through it from eyes that don't live there 
Um, it would actually look like um, quite a lovely planet with um, quite lush greenery and trees and, and, and that. But because of the vibration of the people on that planet, it feels more dense and to you it looks like desert. Um, so you're actually tapping into a different um, perspective. Uh, and, and most of the people on that planet see it from that perspective. But if you came from the perspective from outside the planet, it would look quite nice uh, and inviting. So that's really interesting because the perspective that you have is that this is desert. Um, now this, um, so this heart um, that's expanding, you know that it's not um, what you have to say or what you feel and can't say is not welcome in this area. In fact, it's quite dangerous because you'd be um, you'd be killed in an instant if they thought that you had independent thought even. Uh, so there is a, a group of uh, monks there that uh, that you uh, try and spend time with. First of all, they uh, they are suspicious of you because they um, they do a lot of inner work and they don't want anyone to find that out. They do inner work for the whole of that planet um, because, as you know, it's done on an energy level. So they do it from within. So they don't want um, outsiders coming in and and killing them for doing that. So they're suspicious of you at the beginning. But they do invite you in. They see something there that is gentle, which is unknown on this planet. So they invite you in and uh, you begin to do some work with the monks. Now work, I mean inner work. So you begin to, and that's expanding your consciousness. So you begin to do this inner work with the monks. How the monks uh, do their work is that they sit in a circle, uh, they do chanting, uh, uh, and they invite, on an energy level, they invite souls in from the planet who are asking questions, because questions aren't even allowed on this planet. So they're asking questions. So when they're asking questions, they bring them in. It'd be like a, a daydream to these people outside. They bring them in um, through their thoughts, into the center of the circle and they enshroud them with light. And when they enshroud them with light, they leave. And the importance of them leaving is that on this planet, you die and reincarnate. It's a cycle that you get stuck in. So the only way the monks can release these, uh, the lifetimes of these souls is to allow them to find the light and to leave. So it's really important work that they do. Uh, and it's the only peace that people find or beings find on this planet. Uh, mind you, a lot of them are happy. Happy is not the right word. Content um, and um, have a doggedness. I say doggedness about them. There are a lot of um, dog beings on this planet as well. So they have, um, there's a, they really want to be in that fighting hierarchy, trying to find my place type of experience. So you become um, a, a regular part of this circle with the monks. You don't want to leave. They give you that option to leave um, and you choose not to. And, uh, and that's a brave decision to make because if you get found out, you'll die and then you'll come straight back again. So it's... Um, so for you, this is a, quite a dangerous path to take, but you feel that you can do more good there uh, than you can by leaving. Uh, so this is a soul expansion. Your um, reality begins to change. So you start to have a new perspective. And why I was describing the um, what the planet looked like before is because you begin to see through a different filter. 
so therefore it changes so as you saw desert and um, desolation before you then begin to notice the beauty around you and you're quite amazed because nothing has changed only you have changed and so you come to understand this reality that when you change your perspective your soul from in here when you expand that loving feeling from within here your perspective changes and so does your reality so that was the uh, understanding that you gained from that lifetime being stuck isn't necessarily being stuck it's expanding that that um, soul spark you have within and then through that finding a, a new or noticing a new perspective one it's a it's a cycle but this is a good cycle not the cycle that the Orions have created which is war fighting hierarchy reincarnated into the same thing so the um so the work that you do with the monks is good but you're more of an observer they don't need you there they can do this on their own you're more of an observer and through that observation and joining that chanting circle but you need a pure intent so a lot of times you sit outside the circle because your uh, focus isn't as um, isn't as direct as the monks focus so they don't want you to muddy the waters so so to speak so you sit outside the circle add to it and yours is a being in the presence of rather than having to do this work yourself this isn't your work this is the work of the monks you're being invited to understand what's going on um, leave if you want to but you choose not to so then you'll find a new perspective So that's a part, I mean, that's a part of the loop that you're talking about, not only the new reality and the expanded consciousness, but also um, how to find a, um, how to find your people, how to find your marketing direction is by expanding that spark within and then changing your perspective. So doing the inner work changes the outer perspective okay you stayed there for a long time um i think you saw generations come and go because theirs was a lot shorter lifespan they just they would go to war and get killed they go when i say war it was not a civil war this is a war they would overtake other planets so these were invasions not wars that was probably more of an accurate term where are we off to next okay we're going to Sirius Sirius um um okay so Sirius um technical side um also you've had um, a lifetime of Pleiades as well uh but within the technical is that in uh together in in within the technical realm uh this would be your interest in um in software there were quite a few lifetimes that you've had okay so let's go into um one of the just just show me one they're showing me a lot of different lifetimes you've had in um in the technical field and the reason for that is because you need technology to get from planet to planet and all these civilizations move from planet to planet there aren't many who don't don't travel at all it's very intergalactic um you now you've left the andromeda galaxy and constellation you um incarnate in the milky way a lot more uh there it's a different um vibration in the milky way uh it's there are a lot of lifetimes in this technical field so just show me one um okay so show me two for some reason one's in the Pleiades and one's in Sirius Sirius are the record keepers so 
so you've held records on on that as well this isn't a strong one i'm not sure why they're showing me this at the moment and we're going over to the pleiades is this to tell you better to uh the pleiades and there you're 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 using technology and then we're going to jump again where that came from was over in arcturus so the arcturans use uh, some pretty advanced technology so when you say software this is pretty advanced software uh, they used uh, software for everything they actually use software to raise a vibration as well so they have on Arcturus they have different vibrations for different vocations so if you want to be a teacher uh, an Arcturan teacher that teaches the the young Arcturans to grow they um, you have to have a certain vibration and this is all done through software the software is different to what you um, see now on a computer this software um, uh, coding runs through beings and so they have to upgrade their code their software within the beings to actually become a teacher teaches one of the highest vibrational frequencies on Arcturus uh, being a parent you so these uh, because that's your point of difference rather than connecting in the head space you can connect through the heart space with your words because we use words on this planet so with your um, logical words you can connect through your heart and that's your point of difference in this lifetime that you're in now okay so um, that all works um, and the basically the Pleiadians have been upgraded because up, upgraded yeah up leveled up leveled because of this and you've done your work uh, and you're happy about that uh, your next stop is to Sirius you know Sirius holds records and you have a lot of records that need to be uh, need to be um, documented so this is very much a headspace place and you're very comfortable with that um, headspace even though you can connect with heart space you really do um, prefer the headspace this is also quite a um, not a lonely but um, a very um, single you're on your own here it's like um, I don't see uh, other family you have some friends some work colleagues um, but Sirius has um, a lot of um, you feel at home there because it has a lot of different um, there are universities there there are libraries there are all sorts of things there and you just feel at home in this space it also is multicultural very much like Seattle I guess but um, Seattle probably doesn't have you know mantis beings and all that sort of place um, but you have mantis beings you have um, even some of the, the dog um, beings who are still wearing um, clothing as though they, they're going to fight but this is a peaceful place um, so you have uh, um, dog beings you have um, greys you have uh, green beings you have small ones Arcturans you, all over the, the um, planet um, all over the um, star system they all come here to uh, to I don't like to use the word learn um, because I don't think we're here to learn I think we're here to expand and to grow so they come here to expand their knowledge that's what it's for uh, so you have libraries and universities they have uh, mis uh, mystery schools they have all sorts of things uh, in Sirius so it's a really interesting place for you to live uh, it's uh, just that your work is quite solitary so you spend uh, a lot of your time uh, outside um, when you're not working because you work in inside uh, uh, as record keepers now the records aren't like writing things down uh, these are more holographic these records but they need to be captured so what happens this is quite interesting so 
this is uh, so you would um, uh, sit or stand, yeah, stand, and you would uh, imagine, which is a memory for you. You would remember uh, a detail, an experience that you had, and as you remember that experience, it would be captured holographically, and then it would it would be captured like a seed into a seed, like a grain of uh, a grain of rice. And it would be captured into that, um, but documented, not a grain of rice thrown in with all the other rice particles. It, it's actually documented. So it can be, uh, because it's documented, it can be um, used at any time. Anybody can has access to these records. Uh, there are some records that um, beings don't have access to, but these ones that you're um, cataloging, they people have access or beings have access to these records. Akashic records are, are for the individual. You're doing it for planetary. So uh, Akashic records are held for a uh, similar type of thing, but for an individual. So there are, you would have uh, all the rice grains that are being uh, documented would be for a person, it's for another person, it's for another person, um, whereas yours are more planetary understandings. So these are educational tools for, um, for, for students of university. So this is more of a university type of library, but it's planetary knowledge. So it's an understanding. So if you were to go to the library and get uh, an encyclopedia, I don't know if they still exist, but an encyclopedia on Africa, because you've never been to Africa and you wanted to learn about Africa, then you would um, get an encyclopedia on that. Well, that's the same type of thing. Students would come here to learn more about um, the uh, um, type of what we um, to learn about elementals. And so you would, uh, they would come here and they would find out more about the elementals because it's been documented. Somebody like you has documented that information that they've found uh, previously. So you're tapping into your um, uh, past lives or they're not past, they're parallel lives. So you're tapping into those parallel lives, documenting them for somebody else to retrieve and learn about. So in a way, I guess you're documenting some of your, not all of yours, because um, Akashic Records too are about emotions. So these aren't necessarily emotional records. These are more um, encyclopedic records um, on uh, facts and understandings that you've gained through these. So some of your Akashic Records, therefore, are in this, but not all of them. Uh, your your records aren't open for public access. You have to give permission for that. Okay, so okay, so from here, you thought you'd like a challenge. So you um, chose. Um, I, I got before we even came on this call that you're um, in Samaria. So you got to um, uh, incarnate in Sumeria. Now, I don't know if you know much about Sumeria. It's in um, around where um, Jordan is at the moment. It's in the Middle East. And it's um, it was peaceful until people tried to um, take it over, of course. And then it became a bit of a war zone. So you were there towards the end. It was sort of like 6,000 BC to 2,500 BC. Uh, and you were there, say, around 3,000 BC. And you uh, were there. And it, there was fighting involved. So you seemed to come to places to, um, to try and bring, bring some peace to the, to the place, some understanding to the people, um, helping them to raise their vibration a little so that they can get out from underneath where they are. And, um, and so this was a mixed lifetime for you because it was bittersweet. You um, had a, um, a family um, and you had uh, the boys that you have now, uh, you were afraid for them though because you didn't want, you wanted this to end so that they didn't have to um, be brought up in wartime. 
so this was a uh, bit of sweet for you. So how did you go about that? Um, I can see you on a soapbox again. So you were uh, talking, <laughs> not not high. So this is talking to people who were ready to move forward. Um, if it was high, it'd be all just general public. This isn't general public. So this is people who are ready to move forward. So you would talk to them about a different lifestyle, a different way of living, a different understanding. And these people were um, uh, simple, but they were also connected. This was a, uh, a time when people were still connected. And so they uh, wanted to, uh, they wanted something different. There was no, um, there was no opposition to this in that there, uh, it wasn't like Orion where you had to think a particular way. It wasn't uh, that at all. It wasn't a, a regime. Women were still still a little bit respected at this time. There was equality there. Uh, and so people were looking for something different. And they wanted to work within the parameters that they had. They knew that there was a new world beginning because... Uh, Sumeria was being taken over by people who wanted control of it, but they wanted to work within the parameters. So these were peace loving people that you were working with. And what you wanted to do is you wanted to create a new reality amongst the chaos. So, um, so I guess we would probably call it, um, uh, not a religion, but a cult <laughs> in our days, but it, it was more, uh, people who wanted to, Say they were like, um, uh, what can I liken it to? Liken it to a commune. So it was a community. So a community of people wanted to do things differently, even amongst the chaos. And you were instigating that uh, because you had a family that you wanted to bring to that. So the family that you have now is the same family that you had then. And you wanted to um, protect them or it was more than protect you wanted to uh wanted a platform that they could grow up safely so you mm -hmm. created it and you created it amongst the chaos so it was like i could see all this smoke around and then there's been um, a fan going and you can see the middle here all trees and streams and uh, and that because uh so Samaria was on a river and they were fighting over the river, but you found a, um, some water somewhere else, uh, built dams, uh, only small ones, but you built dams and created your own community around that water, which was very green and lovely. Um, uh, somehow you got fish in that dam and, uh, and you could, um, and the, you got rain and so it was fertile enough you had a um this was like uh you had your own biosphere i'm not sure how that happened but i think it was to do with intent and you were all connected and so you created your own biosphere and you were because there was no internet uh or drones or anything like that in those days or even aircraft um, others who were fighting closer to the river, which was further over in Samaria, didn't know what was happening over here. So you led a fairly peaceful and uh, um, um, self-sustaining, easy, loving life. You had to create it, and your kids didn't know anything about that. Um, but this was um, somewhere that you could call home, and you surrounded yourself with... Uh, somewhat like-minded people you knew you didn't all have to think the same but you all wanted the same thing and that was um, a safe place that you could bring up your families uh, so you created that so your life uh, in Sumeria uh, wasn't one of war but it was one of finding the peace amongst the chaos you had a lifetime in Atlanta so I'm not sure if we need to go there um, is that relevant to So in Atlantis, um, you could see what was going on there. What had um, happened is you're very um, intuitive, so or aware. Um, so you could sense that things were changing when you were in Atlantis. It was going from the easy, happy, uh, advanced society to there were 
I'm getting like wormholes. There was infiltration, infiltration of vibration. So infiltration, this is more reptilian energy, uh, more of an Orion energy that you had over there. Uh, I think it was a combination and they were vying for the planet. So or for the planet, for the, um, well, it was most of the planet at that time. Um, when Atlantis, Atlantis was huge, it took up half the um, planet. So you can see that this was happening um, and you tried to um, tried to get the word out and let people know that that this was happening, but it fell on deaf ears. People weren't interested. Uh, it was like they they enjoyed where they were. All they could see was their little space they were in, uh, their little world that they were in, and you could see them. You could see them as pockets people were living in tiny little pockets in their own little world um, but you can see that in amongst all those pockets the dark energy was beginning to come in uh, and you weren't married in that lifetime you didn't have a family there was nothing you could do about it um, you chose to leave early uh, in that lifetime because you were there to make a difference when you couldn't make a difference in this bigger uh, bigger arena that you wanted to, which was the um, all of Atlantis, when you couldn't make a difference in that, you decided to leave. So you died early there. What you were being shown after you left, though, was that you were affecting individuals. Um, and because you'd been on other planets where you'd affected uh, a lot of people, you thought, individuals wasn't enough and what they showed you after you left um, your soul family showed you was that each of these had a soul family as well and those people that you affected just the individuals made a huge difference to their soul family so in essence you did affect where you thought you weren't so um so in this circumstance rather than take one step after another you were trying to do a huge amount and had uh, big ideals and a huge vision but you couldn't get it to come to pass you, you just couldn't make it work and what they're saying is that you could have done the individuals and those individuals would be like a network that would um, overlay a bit like that that would then um, so rather than seeing those pockets, you would have seen a, a, like a net happen, which would have then um, been a bigger amount of, or, or, I mean, it wasn't going to stop what happened in Atlantis, but it would have, you would have affected more people in that way than you did just the individuals and thought that that, that wasn't good enough. You had high ideals and a bigger picture. Um, so from that, so what do we get from that? So from that, it's saying that don't underestimate the power of connecting with the individuals because that each individual has a soul family and each individual will talk to others. And even though it seems like a long time, they're saying it's not, time is irrelevant. And that will then each little pocket Will then become a net and the reason it'll become a net because they'll tell somebody they'll tell somebody they'll tell somebody who then has a bigger net and a bigger net and a bigger net and uh, they're saying that um, you think that the individuals aren't enough and we're telling you that they are they are they're enough and you get to affect an individual's life and their soul family uh, so they're saying Take that appreciation of when you uh, connect in your business and in your life with one person. Take that um, as, um, as an indicator that you've just affected a soul family, a bigger picture, a bigger soul. Um, and that, that is a part of the whole. All souls are interconnected and overlaid. We're all one. And you've had experience of that being all one because anything that 
is a fifth dimensional and higher all and most of those incarnations that you've had are just that experience that oneness so why did you come to the ukraine same same it was to um, help you to experience that um, uh, find that peace amongst the chaos and create um, that life uh, and so you looked for it you searched for it and you found it where you are you didn't have to stay there it was just an opportunity it was an incarnation so the incarnation was for the connections you connected with other souls that you'd had connections with before and that was your starting point you were never going to stay there well you know that because you're not there okay so what's next where do we go from here so same okay so we see that ukraine we get there to canada to usa to okay so i'm seeing a big net across the usa so we were talking about individuals before i can see individual lights and then a big net now you're going to want to think i want to do that big net right now but just like other lifetimes that you've had you need to know that the individuals create that big net and on this planet it takes time and just as when you were in the Pleiades you needed to understand how to connect from your head to your heart here too is also a form of communication we will need to learn to connect differently You have a safe space for your children you've brought them up this is this was more important to you than anything else is having a safe space to bring up your children and your family because that's what the thread has been throughout lifetimes is having a safe space to bring up your your family so as priorities go that's number one priority for you and you've achieved that so now is the part of affecting people um, so I'm getting the message so the message um, even though it's a software which is 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 all head orientated there needs to be a heart connection because that's how you connect with others is through the heart so I'm getting to find that heart connection and the only way you'll do that is by going inward because that's how you found it before is by going inward okay so why am i seeing these monks again um oh because that was that head heart connection and then you see a different perspective okay so that's what they're showing me is that that when you are with those um, monks in that circle is finding that new perspective so at the moment you're seeing your business through a lens and now you need to see it through a different perspective the way to do that is from heart head to heart and then you'll find a new perspective just like you did with other lifetimes that you've been in so it's all grounding all of these um, have been grounding for where you are now this isn't the ultimate you'll have lots lots more lifetimes your soul keeps on expanding um, if it stops expanding it ceases to exist so that's not possible Um, but you can draw on any of these lifetimes as well. They are now, they're present. And so you can draw on these. It hasn't finished, but I just see that net um, out over the USA. Part of Canada out over the USA and pockets in Europe as well. Your big net is, um, is the USA. Pockets in... Um, uh, when I say pockets, these are different countries, I guess. I guess the countries are smaller in, um, in Europe. That's why they look like pockets. But countries in, don't forget Germany as well, um, countries in, um, in Europe. 
um, the connection you have with these other two from Ukraine is sort of like a connection like this. So it's um, you've been together through other lifetimes. Um, you've always been the instigator though and the, um, the person um, out front. Um, I don't want to say in charge, but the, the leader, the person out front. Um, don't take on everything yourself and um, focus. Now in other, they're talking to me about focus and they're saying in other lifetimes, in other lifetimes, you're able to focus on 10 things at once. It's quite common to do that on other planets and other dimensions is to focus speaking to somebody but having a conversation, telepathic conversation with different people or different beings and that being normal and not feeling stressed about it. So many humans decide they want to do that in this lifetime and in this third density it's not possible. So be careful what you take on um, and that you're not splitting your energy. Uh, go, to, go to what gives you the most passion, what makes your heart sing, what you're excited about. Go that way and then change direction when you're excited about that and then that and then that and then that. And that's how you'll create your web. Just, so the coding is unconscious. So somebody, uh, so the, uh, the coding is created as a frequency. And so the frequency is offered and the, per, the um, being um, uh, is in like a trance-like meditation and that coding is offered. Now, not all can accept a higher frequency they'll uh, lessen the frequency uh, and, and that's fine. Uh, but for different uh, experiences, like, you know, as a parent or a teacher, they need to have a particular frequency and that's how they basically, right. it's a job application. You go for that job. If you can expand into that frequency, you get the job and if you can't, yeah. you don't. Uh, these are, um, uh, uh, there is help though. It's not you just doing it on your own. So that's the frequency. The frequency is the help. That's the assistance in helping you right. raise your vibration, your frequency uh, to a right. much, much higher frequency. Um, uh, but not all can accept that. And it's not because of their uh, uh, mind. It's just because of their allowance. I got two things, intention and allowance. So you need to set your intention for what you want and you have to allow it to come through. Um, many humans get in their own way. And so mm -hmm. we want something and then we either doubt it or we observe things that aren't on the same frequency. So that lowers it. Um, we have a really tough time with the allowance part. Your heart is your connection to the universe. So it's your connection to non-physical. It's your connection to uh, healing, your connection to source. Um, the heart um, is the connection. Heart, heart and soul. You've heard heart and soul. Heart and soul, same thing.